All right, so my landscape might have more than five components. It has one, two, three, four, five. It's exactly at five. But my problem with it is that even though I'm trying to blend these pretty believably, it doesn't have a foreground, middle ground, background, right? So it's all just kind of all back there. It's kind of all background right now. You could say middle ground, background, but it's just not there yet. So as you build forward and you're playing with color, you also want to be pushing forward with your scale. So things are getting a lot bigger so that we can start to build some visual space between these elements. And to have this, even though there's all this cool stuff, to have it be so colorful makes it so it doesn't sit far back enough. So that's why I'm going to do my final direct image adjustment of the three levels, color balance, and hue saturation. When I play with hue saturation here, I can play with the full spectrum of it, and I might push it a little to the left, but then I also just want to take down some of that color intensity. Even though that takes away a lot of the fun of all those like candies and cakes, it makes it more believably come forward. Now I get to play with some of these foreground elements, right? So this is something a lot of you are asking about. How do you get kind of clean cuts on more complicated things? And this is where a tablet can be helpful. So I'm going to switch to my tablet, though you're not required to. It's always good to get practice with it. Remember, you check it out from the back of the room, put something in there. And I'll show you why. Because if I use the magic wand and I try to cut this out, hold down shift, kind of get everything. It's going to miss little chunks for sure. And sometimes you just have to draw it. So I haven't done any color correcting yet, but I just used my magic wand. I'm going to go ahead and click on select and mask. It remembers to feather it by 1.5 pixels, say OK. And now I'm just going to delete once, maybe twice, maybe three times. All right, now deselect. So that did a really good job on some parts, like there. But it left little debris. So now if I use my magic wand, it will show me all the debris that's left. And that's a really amateurish sign. So then I just use my lasso with the shift key held down. And I use my tablet to just select and delete all this little debris. And sometimes I'll need to draw into the edge as well. And remember, my lasso is set to feather at two pixels. Now, the more I come forward, the more I might want harder edges, right? But all these little blobs, especially with their organic, not man-made, I can just cut in and make my own edge if I want. Now, I skipped the step, like many of us do, of doing my direct image adjustments first. And that's a mistake because doing that would make it so I don't need to be so careful with this step because the things would start to match better anyway. But as you get into more foreground elements, that can be helpful. Yeah, so the magic wand starts to fail you at a certain point with a certain amount of image complexity. So then you just got to go in with your lasso. Mm -hmm. You hold down shift, yep. And then to subtract from a selection, if you accidentally select too much, like whoops, what I can do is hold down option and subtract from my selection. And that's true for any selection tool. Magic wand, lasso, right now I'm doing it with the lasso. Shift to add option to subtract. And I recommend you keep it that way. You can set the tool to always add, to always subtract, to always overlap, but better just to use the default and get used to using option and shift. They're what are called tool modifiers. All right. So this is more of a foreground element. So when I adjust it in terms of its 
levels and its color balance. I don't want it to blend into the background so much. I want it to start standing out to have a little bit more contrast. But I still want it to be believably in the same atmosphere, right? So color balance, I'm going to still push a little bit more of that cyan into it, a little bit more of that blue into it, deaden some of those features. Come on. And the highlights, I might even take out some of the yellow. There we go. And then in hue saturation, remember it's always levels, color balance, hue saturation. That's the big lesson today using these direct adjustments. I might even take out a little bit of that saturation. Shift the spectrum just a little bit. And now even the parts I didn't successfully cut out yet, because they might get covered up, you see how these don't stand out so much as they did before. Because I, I worked with those colors. All right, next. What goes on top of that? So this is a great example of where to use the magic wand. Do I need to be on the right layer? You can only select from layers that are selected. Hold down shift, continue this selection. And then select and mask so that it feathers it a little bit, just a pixel and a half, and then I can zoom in and I delete. You can see that big halo there. So that might mean I need to do more than just feather. When you get a big halo like that, it's because this is low contrast. And so instead of trying to save that, I'm just going to cancel this. I'm just going to cut it out with my lasso, my two pixel feather. And so I just draw. I'm going to sharpen this ice cream cone's edge by just defining my own organic edge. And you can loop it in parts and then delete. And it's feathered, so you can hit delete a few times. Kind of find your edge. I don't even want that. This, I'm going to find a new edge. So that's why a tablet can be really helpful on this, especially with blurry photo reference. And you can always cut it, cut it away. It's collage. You can arrange this stuff any way you want. All right, now I've got some really solid middle ground in there. So I got middle ground, background. What about the immediate foreground? Well, these cupcakes, they're pretty strong. And I could try magic wand. But that's not going to work too great because there's all these variations of color, right? I could try my lasso. And that will work okay, especially with the feather, right? But that's a lot of work. So is there a better tool? Well, I don't usually recommend it, but this is a good option for what's called the quick selection tool. And it's where you kind of paint in what you want to keep. This will just kind of show you why I don't like it. <laughs> but in some cases, it can do a good job. Hold down shift, keep adding. But I got to be careful not to go over. And what it's doing is it's I'm kind of painting the area I want to keep. Did you see it just jump? Uh, but this is what I actually want to select. So then what I want to say is select the inverse of that and then delete. Okay. But I want a little bit more of 
this guy. Whoops, not all of it though. So I'm going to now you can change selection tools at any time, and I'm going to add a little bit more of this muffin top in there, just with my lasso. Because I selected inverse, what I'm actually doing is subtracting it, so I'm holding down option. All right, and now I can add in this part to delete. And then delete. And it's going to mess up. It's going to leave things you don't like. But remember, the computer is really good at selecting empty space, especially with the magic wand. So once I've cut it out and deleted, even though I have that two pixel feather on there, I can always select the empty space and select and mask it to feather it a little bit more. Okay, now I've got that nice cut out. Now let's play with direct adjustments, first levels, and this time I'm actually going to brighten it up because it's coming more into the foreground. And then, whoops, then with image adjustments after levels, color balance, I don't have to worry about them being so warm anymore. I don't need them to fit into the, the background. I want them to kind of stand out. But I don't want them to stand out too much, right? I still want them to be believable. And then hue saturation, which I'm just always showing you the three, but sometimes you don't need all three. I'm just going to play it a little bit both ways, and then maybe just take the saturation down a bit. Next. Uh, the big cupcake. So this is a big foreground element. You see how it's kind of cropped off the edge? We're looking past it. So let's try magic wand for this. The only trick is that it's kind of soft edged. Ah, keeps not wanting to select the right layer. Okay. So if I delete it now, you see how I'll get all that kind of fragments, right? But if I do select and mask, feather it by a pixel and a half, and then I hit delete, it will start to bite away at that within reason. So it's still left little fragments, but that's a pretty nice cutout along the edge I need. And then here where it's a little less clear, I'm going to just use my lasso. And I'm going to find that kind of paper cup edge that I want. Now before I play with the color on that, I want to see what my other foreground elements are. And we want to turn these in in about half an hour. So I have to kind of see what I can do with them. So this cupcake, same thing. Let's try Magic Wand. Pixabay is great with its food photography because these designers donate these images and they're photographed well on a soundstage with controlled lighting, but they're using what's called a narrow depth of field. So unfortunately, the edges are pretty soft and that can make these cutouts a little trickier, right? So I just made them really hard. And now I'm going to go in with my magic wand, select that empty space, say select and mask. And this time I'm going to not just feather it. I'm going to feather it by three pixels. I'm going to smooth it which will get rid of some of that bumpiness. 
But if you